Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now. It's me, Isabel, here with a fun rock video today. So let's say you have read Fire In His Fingertips or you maybe didn't like volume one because of some of the non-con here, but you want a very steamy manga. You want a manga that's explicit, presenting relationships at the very least. I've got you covered today because our friends over at Seven Seas who came out with Fire in his fingertips on their ghost ship imprint have a new imprint full of these kinds of books. These are the three newest ones that have come out. We do have one more coming out this month in September and I will be back with some sort of review on that obviously in my like mid months but once we have some more volumes I'll, I'll do some updates uh, especially if we get some more releases announced. I'm, I'm very hopeful. We got three of these so far. This has been coming out since like the summer. We have I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess, Game Between the Suits, and we have Outbride, Beauty, and the Beast. I'm gonna talk about each three, all three of these for you and let you know which one I think would be a good pick, depending on what you're looking for in your explicit manga reading. Uh, this is some of my favorite kinds of manga to read. I really love uh, these kinds of romancy mangas with actual sex on the page for the most part. These don't all have sex in volume volume one, so do keep that in mind. We're gonna start with my favorite, personally, so far of the series, although it's tied. There's two of them that are like my favorites. This is I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess which is a time travel situation where she is reborn into a different world, place, uh, or transported there, however you want to view it. She, our princess, our supposed crown princess, is the prime minister's daughter and she's going to be betrothed to the prince of the kingdom. She's not really interested in that. She has no desire. Whoever marries them is supposed to be a virgin. So her plan is to go to this party where she knows that this like guy comes and he takes have sex with a lot of different women at these parties and it's her perfect chance to lose her virginity. Well they hook up at this party and it is bomb. It is very early in the book uh, which was great and something she doesn't know about him is quickly discovered because the next day he literally shows up at her house and is like I'm marrying you. He is not who she thought he was because he's perhaps who she was supposed to marry and this world uh, has like a thing where they do it a thing when they have sex with the person they're marrying for the first time that puts a mark on them and he does that with her their first time so she doesn't know that yet because like it's just starting to form it's like up here on her chest so she like doesn't know about that either so i'm gonna go ahead and give you the note that like there's some dubious consent happening here with like the unagreed upon markings and yeah so she is going to marry him and he's convinced to make her fall in love with him and i just honestly I'm in love with this series. I cannot wait for volume two. I'm so excited. Um, and this is like a really fun historical world setting. I think that this is just like bomb on the smut presentation so quick and early on. I also think that this one is just one of those ones that if you like historical romances, if you're unsure on these, I think this is an easy one to read for your first time reading a dirty manga. It doesn't have as many of the dub con issues that you're gonna see in Fire in His Fingertips. Some of this is cultural, some of this is just what it is, um, unfortunately, when you read these sometimes. But I also enjoy this one because Liddy, our main character, is definitely very like, absolutely not even after revealing who he is and like all these things and reasons why and he's like no no no, i'm gonna make this happen and i'm gonna make this work i'm gonna make you like me so i really really like that i'm very excited there's also like polygamy in this this world which like she's not interested in either and like i think he's willing to give it up to be with her so yeah i'm really i'm really excited for volume two and i i really can't recommend this one enough the art in it is also really pretty which is great i mean Oh, and the hookup night, the reason she doesn't know it's him is like they all wear masquerade masks. So I just, I really enjoyed this overall. It was such a fun read. So if you're looking for historical, you're looking for less of the issues and you want something where like she really doesn't want to be with him, but there he is like in love with her, I'll never be your crown princess is the one. Next, we're going to talk about the one that I find harder to recommend, but I also really enjoyed still. But again, it's harder to recommend because it's a, just a very different story. It definitely leans heavily onto some dubious consent and non-consent happening. So there's that. 
that is Outbride Beauty and the Beast. I really liked this. I was warned a lot about this one before I dove in. A lot of my friends, I think, didn't know anything, obviously, which how would you if you're one of the first group to read it? <laughs> so I've benefited greatly from my friends who had already read this one. When she wakes up in this new world, there are these men with like ears and horns and all kinds of features. <laughs> they um, are one of four men who are supposed to marry her. Uh, there's a race to breed her first. She is 17. That is one big caveat I need to give here. She is 17 in this. But yeah, so she's like the last female and they're all very like attracted to the smell of her. So she's wearing clothing that like represses her smell. Uh, and whoever's first to breed her, like it's gonna save their, their part of the kingdom basically. She's also afraid of boys, which is really cute and funny. I find it very endearing to read. Four different heroes options here. And they all also have to give her different like fluids from them, generally speaking saliva so far. Uh, and that will protect her from the sickness that will make her body like be an excruciating pain. So there's a lot of that in this one. This one is not explicit on volume one. We do end on quite the note though. I will say that I'm curious for volume two, but I'm nervous also on where it's gonna go. But this has been really cute. I really like our heroes in this. I'm very curious to see where the world is going with them and who she's going to pick, if she picks one or if she's gonna pick them all or how that's gonna work. I mean, we do, there's, there's things done in this. I'm not gonna say it's not like as explicit, but like there's no penetration is I guess the point I should make on this one. There's no penetration in this book. But yeah, I really enjoyed this for the most part. But again, go in knowing that she's 17. There's some definite dubious consent non-con happening. And it also heavily features like, it's just kind of got some ick to it. But I, for some reason, really liked the kind of ick it has, if that makes sense. Last, we have Game Between the Suits, which is my second favorite of the series. If I was ranking these, it would be this and I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess kind of tied because they're both very different like uh, voices happening here. This follows a 27 year old career woman who puts everything behind her career, including answering the phone during sex. So she is like, I ain't got time for men. I have no time for this. I only want to be like hook up with people and like move on because like none of her boyfriends stick around because she's so job focused. And I really liked this. Her firm hires this new guy who's right here and he is like this charming playboy and all the girls flirt with him and he think he's cute. And he starts pursuing her and she kind of turns him down constantly. They hook up once and they decide to keep hooking up and it's only supposed to be a game of hooking up, no falling in love. So it's very apparent like that they're going to lose this game, this bet they put in place. But who's gonna fall first? We aren't sure. What I really liked about this one personally was that our heroine is so different from other books I've read in the ma in manga world. Uh, she's so career driven and so um, ready to just like put herself first. And I love seeing that in a book. I feel like we don't get that enough in manga or even in the other books I read often. It's, you know, it's a shameful thing to be a woman who's driven about their career, I feel like sometimes. It's not actually, but in books it can be. So I really loved that aspect of it. I really liked him. I found him very intriguing. I thought the sexy times were well done in this book, well illustrated, well well shared. I really just had a lot of fun reading it. So yeah, this is tied for my favorite from the new series. Um, but yeah, I feel like, again, I think I'll Never Be Your Princess and Game are the two easiest ones to pick up from this series. And then if you're like a little more daring and you want to dip your toes in, Outbride could be a good option, but go in knowing those content warnings ahead of time. And then it can be a little off-putting, some of it. And there's a lot of saliva strings in that one also. But if you uh, are going to pick one of these up, let me know which one. And if you don't want to do that, you can leave me a work-related emoji in the comments. <laughs> Uh, and I will have links to all three of these mangas and Fire and His Fingertips in that description box for you, as well as links to be a friend anywhere on the internet. And I will talk to y'all in just a few days. Bye. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see. What we can be, life with no distractions.